www.expressit.net. Um, my net access is currently down because um, my old you know commercial level piece of shit Netgear router died. Um, lasted a lot longer than I thought it would though. It's only ten years old. But anyway, um, Archfiend, you've heard me talk about him. He's an old Expressit net user. Exisop. He's going to start up his BBS again eventually. But anyway, um, he just sold me a corporate class, um, really badass Netgear router, firewall, etc., 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 for, um, only 140. Um, he said it's worth about two grand or so. Um, I guess that would vary, um, depending on who you're buying it from. But the, the case on it is aluminum, as you can hear, um, instead of the plastic garbage. And, um, as you can hopefully read here, it is a ProSafe Dual WAN Gigabit Firewall with SSL and IPsec VPN. Now, if you want to open up a new Firefox tab or whatever, hit up google.com and you put in keywords Netgear F V S three three six G. You will find the full specifications on the sucker. Cause I'm only gonna do a little brief overview of this thing here. But um, if you want like the full kit and caboodle on this, just uh, again you can Google Netgear, which you see the name right there, and the model number. I don't know how well this is gonna come off because this is a really reflective surface. But, um, FVS336J. So if you want more information, you can Google. It's going to give you a little bit of a walk through here. Um, on the front, we see all the information here. Now let's flip over to the back. This is where things kind of get interesting. Okay, um, it is a gigabit router. As you can see, gigabit, it's pretty sweet. It's got two WAN ports right there. It's got two. Um, what this can do, the reason it has two, is if you have two internet connections, you know, um, I know most people don't have two internet connections, but in special circumstances, like, um, Let's say you uh, are living with um, your parents or something because of economic hard times. And um, let's say you have internet access through Speakeasy or Verizon or AT&T or, or whatever. Um, and let's say your parents also have internet access. And you're living in the same physical building. But you can take um, both internet accounts... Um, one, one is physically plugged into WAN 1, the other is physically plugged into WAN 2. You can bridge the connections for one big, massive, you know, internet connection. So, you know, let's say you've got uh, Speakeasy ADSL 2 with, you know, uh, 15 Mbps down and um, 2 Mbps up or whatever. And, um, you know, let's say uh, your parents or roommate or, you know, whomever else... Um, might be in the same physical premises, or maybe you're in an apartment building. Maybe it's okay. You could run. You can run wire um, down to the floor below you, or flow floor above you, or, or whatever. And um, you know, let's say they've got Comcast with like um, two Mbps up, and uh, you know, fifteen Mbps down, or whatever. Well, you can plug both connections into the sucker, bridge the connections for one massive connections. You could end up with like 30, 40, 50, you know, Mbps down and, um, you know, anywhere from uh, 2 to 4 Mbps up and just have this obscene internet connection. Of course, if you're just living by yourself, you know, got your family or whatever, you know, um, or you're a teenager or whatever your situation might be, you've only got one internet connection and that's it. Well then, um, you may or may not need the, um, the, the WAN port, the second one. Of course, there is another special circumstance. Now, I, I'm just tossing out a for instance here. I'm not, I'm not recommending anything per se. But let's say, um, 
you had a laptop with, oh, I don't know, Backtrack Linux installed to it, which is basically just a total, like, geek utility. I mean, it's awesome. And let's say hypothetically, again, I'm not recommending anything, but hypothetically, you had some neighbors around you that's got uh, wireless access. And let's say they're secured networks, they're using uh, web encryption or uh, whatever. And um, let's say you learn how to use some of the, you know, the, the web key cracking um, programs. You know, just hypothetically here, not making any recommendations or anything. I'm not advocating any courses of action. But let's just say you learned how to use those utilities and let's say two of your neighbors have some really good connections and that's wireless router and everything. And, um, you know, you, uh, you kind of sort of, um, ran those programs and you cracked it. You got in, right? Um, well, in the secondary port, um, you can plug in, there's a wireless, um, uh, network adapter, or, or, no, actually, I'm sorry, I do believe that would plug into a LAN port, because that sort of thing is, um, originally made, I think, like, for, like, networking your Xbox wirelessly or something, I don't know, you'd have to Google it. Um, Archfiend was telling me a little about this, I've never done it, I don't know all the specs, but this is just pure hypothetical, so, all right, let's say you tap into these connections, you know, you've got your little wireless plug on here, and you're accessing it through a laptop or computer or whatever over your local area network. And, um, you know, you got a couple of neighbors, and you are able to hook up to their, their routers. Although, preferably, you might want to ask their permission. They might let you. I don't know. Could be. But let's say, whether you ask their permission, you craft it, or whatever, you know, you hook that up. Well, you can still bridge the connections. You can bridge your, uh, you know, whichever one you've got going in here for your home connection. You can bridge that. Um, using the, um, the thing you would plug into here. I do believe this router has the ability to detect such things and bridge those connections from what, uh, Archfiend was telling me. So yeah, then you could have, like, some super obscene massive connection, because let's say two or three of those people have, like, Comcast, and it's, like, 15 Mbps down, 2 Mbps up, and, yeah, I mean, you could potentially have anywhere from, like, 40 to 100 Mbps down. I mean, that's like the speeds of a freaking, you know, local area network practically. So, I mean, there's a lot you could do with with this sort of a, um, a router. Um, it's obviously got a built-in firewall, seeing as it is a firewall. It's also got um, VPN, virtual um, private networking. And um, what you can do is, um, let's say somebody else has that you know as a similar firewall. Not necessarily this one. There's lots of other firewalls capable of uh, VPN. Let's say someone has something similar, and, um, you know, it's capable of, uh, a VPN. Well, you can, you can link your two local area networks into one big-ass private, uh, you know, well, one, uh, big private, um, wide area network, so that basically when you're bridging the two local area networks by way of the internet, um, it acts as almost like one big, huge local area network. So, um, that's always pretty cool to do, you know, no laws against that or anything. Um, this has, this is a four port, so I'm definitely going to need to, um, you know, I'm going to need some hubs, some, I've got 10 and 100 hubs, I'm going to be getting gigabits, so, I mean, that's going to be pretty sweet. Um, the plug on it is your standard, you know, PC style plug, it's got the power switch on the back, and... You know, if need be, you can set to factory defaults. And you can also update the firmware through the program in the router itself by, the, by way of the firmware itself. You don't need any special programs. just need to download the firmware off of Netgear's website, and the router can handle the rest. So this is pretty sweet. I'm almost at the 10-minute mark here, so I'm going to end this video. But I just wanted to kind of show it off a little before I hook it up and plug it in. So yeah, www.expressit.net.